talk to someone as if in therapy while also giving the opportunity to do something I love. Bringing couch therapy to the streets of London. I feel like I sleep a lot better when I don't drink, so I'm interested in trying. With the holidays over, people are hitting the reset button to kick off the new year. And the special connection this therapy cat has with her owner. Welcome to Ion Health, where we focus on stories that affect your physical and mental well-being. I'm Michael George. We're seeing a lot of COVID and flu spreading around the country after the holiday gatherings and travel. According to CDC data, six flu-related pediatric deaths happened in the last week of 2023. As Jared Hill reports, the agency is keeping a very close eye on how the healthcare system is dealing with the increased strain. New year, same worries as COVID hospitalizations nationwide are at the highest level since last February. It's concerning in the sense that the, the volume of patients is higher. COVID hospitalizations at St. Joseph's Medical Center in Patterson, New Jersey, more than triple compared to a month ago. Across the country in Los Angeles, cases up by 25%. Nationwide, emergency room visits and deaths also on the rise from last week alone. They are sicker, especially the patients that are the most vulnerable that have comorbid disease, things like cancer or respiratory disease. And it's not just COVID. Doctors are also seeing more cases of the flu and RSV. 31 states are reporting high or very high levels of various respiratory illnesses. The uptick leading hospitals in several states and Washington, D.C. to bring back masking requirements. It really helps to protect the vulnerable people that are sitting out there in the waiting room right now. The CDC says one contributing factor to the rise in illnesses is people haven't been keeping up with vaccinations. Fewer than 50 percent of adults are vaccinated for the flu, even fewer for COVID. <laughs> With cases of all three likely to have spread as people got together over the holidays, health officials say pay attention to symptoms like coughing, <laughs> fever, or fatigue. If you are getting sick, one of the best things you can do from there, in addition to taking care of yourself, is limit how many other people you expose. In other words, stay home if you can. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. More Americans with diabetes will be getting a break on their insulin costs for 2024. Manufacturer Sanofi is joining Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk to offer price caps or savings programs that will lower the cost of the drug. Many patients will pay just $35. The Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act also means Medicare enrollees will pay no more than that $35 cap for their prescriptions. But the cost of many other drugs are going up. Sanofi and several major drug makers like Pfizer and Takeda are raising prices on more than 500 drugs. That's according to data analyzed by healthcare research firm 3Axis Advisors. And the total number is likely to be more than 500 as the year continues. More than 1,400 drugs had their price upped each of the past two years. Since 2019, the median price increase was 5%. Many people try to cut back on their alcohol consumption after the holidays. But dry January, as it's known, isn't always easy. We spoke with a doctor to get some tips on how to succeed. New Yorker Jalal Talib gave up alcohol for a month and noticed some big improvements. Sleep has gotten much deeper and better. I feel stronger physically and mentally. After the excesses of the holidays, many Americans consider going cold turkey for the entire month of January. But it can be daunting. I feel like I sleep a lot better when I don't drink, so I'm interested in trying. Alcohol use and abuse rose sharply during the pandemic. But a survey from the American Psychiatric Association found about a third of Americans say they're drinking less over the last three years. I think one of the biggest benefits of Dry January is it gives all of us a chance to re-examine our relationship with alcohol. Cutting back can be good for everything from heart health, blood pressure and liver function to improved sleep, mental clarity and mood. Dr. Jeremy Kidd says many find it tough to go the whole month without drinking. But there are some things you can do to succeed. Setting short-term achievable goals. So sometimes taking that week by week rather than an entire month. He also suggests using the buddy system and talking to a therapist if you need extra support. Talib says after finding he could part with alcohol temporarily, he decided to give it up for good. Everything is great in moderation, but with alcohol in specific, if you, if you stop it for a little, it'll make a big difference in your life. 
a small step that could lead to some big life changes. Now to the epidemic of gun violence in the U.S. In 2020 and 2021, firearms contributed to more deaths of children than any illness or injury. That's according to a KFF analysis of CDC data. The child firearm mortality rate doubled between 2013 and 2021. Manuel Bajorquez met the people on the front lines of this public health crisis. Miami's Ryder Trauma Center sees about 400 gunshot wound victims a year. So we got a gunshot wound to the right femur. Entrance, no exit. Rescue 2 is going to be around you momentarily. County Rescue 2. On this uh, night last again. summer, doctors and nurses treated several patients with bullets embedded in their legs or literal holes in their hands. You see people on their worst day and they're on death's door. Nurse Beth Sunquist says as a level one trauma center, those who make it here have a better chance. In a matter of minutes, you can have your trauma surgeon here and he's the same one that walks back and is in the operating room with you. And if you went to a smaller outside hospital, that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. And you wouldn't survive. What strikes Dr. Gabriel Ruiz is how young many of the victims are. It's the biggest killer of children in our country. That impact, we don't even know how big it is, but we think that it might be bigger than cancer and cardiovascular disease, smoking and obesity, things that we as a society actively work on. Um, I think the impact of gun violence is greater than those diseases. And the wounds, he says, have become more severe. We see also patients that have very, very serious injuries with very high energy weapons that actually mimic those that are seen in war. In fact, this is where the U.S. Army trains some of its trauma surgeons before being deployed. Um, Dr. Ian Fowler, an Army major, is one of the instructors. But I think that it gives them the ability to really work on their team dynamic and hopefully better prepare them for, uh, for if they're about to deploy or any type of activation that they may be having in the future. Don't, oh, wait, 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 that hurt. These doctors and nurses are on the front lines of the nation's gun violence epidemic, removing one bullet at a time, handing it off to police for their criminal investigation, and waiting to see what else the night might bring. And while Bajorquez, CBS News, Miami. Junior doctors in England walked off the job on January 3rd, the start of a six-day walkout that's the longest strike in the National Health Service's history. The junior doctors account for about half the physicians in the NHS. They're fighting for higher pay amid steep inflation. The strikes caused tens of thousands of appointments to be canceled or postponed, adding to the record high backlog made worse by the COVID pandemic. Every day of strike action is a tragedy for absolutely everyone involved. Dr. Robert Lawrenson is the co-chair of the Junior Doctor Committee at the British Medical Association. We don't want to be on strike. We'd much rather be at work and being valued properly. But that's the crux of the issue. The government are determined to cut our pay year on year. And we've seen a 26% pay cut over the last 15 years. What are we supposed to do? Nurses, ambulance crews, and senior doctors reached deals with the government. But the union representing junior doctors held out, and negotiations recently broke down. Since May of 2022, when the country first learned the Supreme Court was planning to overturn Roe v. Wade, more women have been stockpiling abortion pills. The two drugs involved, mifepristone and mifepristol, have a shelf life of several years. Demand remains high ever since and increases when Republican-led courts and states signal further action. A new research letter published in JAMA Internal Medicine details that demand. We spoke with Dr. Abigail Aiken, one of the letter's authors and an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin. Dr. Aiken, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I wanted to ask how you collected this data. So these data were provided by the online telemedicine organization Aid Access. And Aid Access has been providing the advanced provision service since September of 2021. And our research team reached out to ask, could we look at fully anonymized data on the volumes of requests that the service had been uh, receiving for the advanced provision service? When did you see the biggest spikes in demand? Well, we followed these requests over time through almost two years, and we found these biggest spikes really coincided 
with several policy shocks. So first one was when the Dobbs decision was leaked. So prior to the announcement of the formal decision, there was a leak uh, that was widely reported about um, online and in the media. And that really led to this uh, large spike in requests to the service. The second one was in spring of 2023, when there were two conflicting judicial rulings on Mifepristone. There was a challenge to the FDA's approval of that medication and two conflicting rulings, one siding with the plaintiffs and one siding with the FDA, uh, were simultaneously released. And we saw another spike in requests at that time. On a basic level, these pills, what do they do? The first is um, mifepristone, and that blocks one of the hormones that you really need to sustain a pregnancy. That's the hormone progesterone. So that's a progesterone blocker, mifepristone. And then misoprostol causes contractions of the uterus to expel its contents. As we've seen abortion rights, that fight continue in various states. Have you seen fluctuations in the number of people requesting this? Yes, the... Numbers do fluctuate, and we have seen an overall increase over time. I think as more people do find out about the service, advanced provision is something that is, I think, quite new to a lot of people. Uh, but rather than seeing increases in response to laws going into effect, we seem to see the biggest increases in response to um, legislation that might be coming down the pike, that people are looking ahead, thinking this could happen where I live, and um, maybe preparing for that eventuality. How do people get these? Do they require a prescription? So there are various ways that people are now accessing these medications, uh, particularly in states that have bans or restrictions on abortion right now. And with the aid access service, the uh, during the study, the medications were being prescribed by a doctor located internationally and then mailed to people in the United States. All right. Well, Dr. Aiken, thanks so much for breaking down that research for us. Thank you for having me. Coming up, encouraging news for the baby who received the first ever partial heart transplant and a warning about carbon monoxide this winter. back. In the spring of 2022, 18-day-old Owen Monroe became the first person to receive a partial heart transplant. Now, more than a year and a half later, doctors at Duke University say the new valves and arteries are growing along with Owen. That may mean he won't need future risky heart surgeries. Owen was born with a congenital heart defect, and the standard procedures were not going to work on his tiny heart. So they decided to try something new. A donor match was found, and Dr. Joseph Turek and his team fused the arteries and valves from that heart into Owen's. Months later, Taylor Monroe said her son was acting just like a regular baby. Since the surgery, at least a dozen other partial heart transplants have been performed in children. Any physical activity is better for your heart than sitting, even sleeping. Researchers with the University College London confirmed what many already knew. Just a few minutes of movement provides heart benefits for people with a sedentary lifestyle. And the restorative process that comes from a good night's sleep is also better for the heart than sitting. It's important not just to get an, enough sleep, but also making sure that that's high quality, right? So making sure that you're having a restful sleep, that your body is able to relax. Doctors with UCL say daily activities can count as exercise. For example, when you go grocery shopping, you're going to lift two bags and walk into your house with them. That is incredibly useful for maintaining your muscle strength. Also, picking up cans and putting them in the fridge or on shelves, that's also useful. The CDC recommends 150 minutes of physical activity of moderate intensity every week. As the temperatures drop and home heating systems run to keep us warm, the risk of carbon monoxide poisoning increases. Carbon monoxide can quickly make people disoriented. Stephanie Stahl has one Delaware student's story of how technology saved her life. 
Natalie Nasaka is starting the new year grateful to be alive. I ended up losing consciousness. She's describing a bout of carbon monoxide poisoning that happened in her Smyrna, Delaware apartment. I was feeling extremely exhausted and my vision was getting blurry. Before she passed out, she reached for her watch. This button you She hit SOS, putting out the emergency call to 911. But when um, I heard the the firefighters yell out fire department and they yanked me out of bed. I just started crying and saying, I want to live, I want to live. Carbon monoxide is a gas that has no color, odor, or taste. It's called a silent killer, claiming more than 400 people a year and sending 50,000 Americans to the emergency room. As it is a lack of oxygen, really, that affects the body, uh, there are certain things that do become irreversible. The early warning signs include dizziness, confusion, and vomiting. Now, I've been riding waves of emotions. Natalie, who's a student, says she was lucky that help arrived quickly and she was revived in the ambulance with oxygen. Well, the carbon monoxide was confirmed because the fire department's monitor read 80 parts per million in the apartment, which is extremely high. She thinks the gas leak came from a faulty heater, which is one of the leading causes for carbon monoxide poisoning in the winter. And there was no detector in the apartment, something Natalie admits she should have had for herself and her pet, who survived because firefighters opened a window. It was extremely scary. Stephanie Stahl, CBS News, Philadelphia. A fingerprint is sometimes enough to nab a criminal, and now it may be enough to catch breast cancer. Scientists at Sheffield Hallam University looked at the molecular makeup of the sweat from a fingerprint in a group of women with varying levels of breast cancer. The test correctly predicted the results 97% of the time. I have discovered a few years ago the possibility to cross over from forensic to medical diagnostics using sweat. And sweat contains a lot of different molecules, but what we're interested in is proteins. Professor Simona Francese worked in forensics for nearly 15 years, profiling criminal suspects based off their fingerprints. She hopes the fingerprint can one day replace the standard mammogram, though not just yet. I am hopeful from the data that we have that this could be at least, uh, and that's what we're aiming at, uh, a, a first pass screening point. So where the patients come and take this simple, painless, non-invasive test, and if they are clean, if they don't have the pathology, they are spared from undertaking uh, mammograms or biopsies that, of course, are very invasive. Guidelines in the U.S. suggest women should get a mammogram every two years, beginning at age 40. A popular New Year's resolution is to improve one's mental health, and cleaning up around the house can help achieve that goal. A 2009 study from UCLA found clutter can deeply impact self-esteem and mood. Clutter becomes the indication that something else is going on inside first. Declutter expert Monica Fay knows firsthand how unorganized spaces impact the ability to focus, stress levels, and sleep. Daily stuff that builds up might be the immediate thing that makes us feel bad, makes us feel agitated, but then we might also have the rooms that it allows us to push away what's going on. I definitely had a lot of shame and just like overwhelmed. Lindsay has spent years helping others in her career as a therapist, but in her own life, she spent years in a state of disorganization. And I would feel like defeated and more depressed or I'd feel more anxious that I wasn't able to manage it. Um, so much so that obviously I reached out for professional help. Lindsay and Faye started with just one bookcase and over time emptied out the clutter and the mental load. Some traumas I was working through and then uh, because of that, I was making myself so busy that I didn't have time to go through the things. Faye says tweaking routines are better than entire overhauls. After the break, how these wildlife trainers made it easy to treat their animals and the organ donors honored at this year's Rose Parade. Welcome back. Instead of lying on the couch during therapy, this London group wants you to jump over it. Esperit Concrete combines parkour with clinical therapies, hoping to improve a patient's well-being through their unique counseling. 
Is it going to come down? The relaxed atmosphere makes it easier for patients like Arturo Pali to open up. I come here every week, not just because of like the physical opportunities that it gives, but also the opportunities for me to talk to someone as if in therapy, while also giving the opportunity to do something I love. We take that thought and we introduce another one. Dr. Katsuri Torquia says the therapy helps patients see and interact with the world in a new way. All of our sessions are designed to get people to experience parkour as a movement, jumping, vaulting, running, climbing. But every single session is informed with a psychological theme, whether that is working on anxiety or whether that's working on days when we're feeling a bit low. It's a combination of psychological skills and movement skills to lead to people feeling a little bit more equipped for what life throws at them. Esprit Concrete runs classes for the general public, as well as in schools and healthcare settings. A wildlife park in Williams, Arizona is teaching their animals new tricks, but they're not for the spectators. Many animals at Arizona know how to take their own medicine. In this bear's case, to give herself a shot. No needle at all, just the syringe. And we're doing kind of like a maintenance behavior with this with this little lady. So we have to build that trust up. And the only way to do that is by giving them complete control over the entire behavior. Trainer Jordan Stuckey says teaching these behaviors makes it safer to treat the animals, like when this jaguar had an issue with his tail. He actually did this this morning and noticed that he had been actually sucking on it or licking it, over grooming it. And it's just, it's so helpful to have this behavior where he just gives us the tail. Arizona also trains wolves to receive ear care that helps fend off flies. An Ohio woman and her cat have a unique bond. Both are missing a leg. Got right in a prosthetic and took off, so I'm one of the lucky ones <laughs> as far as that goes. In 2006, Juanita Mengel was hit by a drunk driver and had her left leg amputated. About five years ago, Lola Pearl was found at just a few weeks old with her hind legs twisted together. <laughs> Veterinarians eventually amputated her left leg. They find you, you don't find them. Laura kind of found me. Today, the duo is one of about 200 therapy cat teams with the nonprofit Pet Partners. They visit hospitals, nursing homes, and schools to help with therapy and improve patients' well being. The goal of a therapy animal intervention is to share the love, the warmth of an animal um, to assist in whatever treatment objectives already exist for the client or the person receiving the services. Other therapy animals with pet partners include mini pigs, llamas, and alpacas. At this year's Tournament of Roses parade, a special float honored organ donors and recipients. Donya Backus introduces us to a hip hop artist who has benefited greatly and given back in return. Among the bands and floats at this year's Tournament of Roses parade was hip hop artist Freeway. We still hustle till the sun come up. The rapper was boosted to stardom in the early 2000s as a member of Jay-Z's Rockefeller Records. But at the parade, he was recognized for something other than his music. When I was diagnosed with end-stage renal failure back in uh, September 2015, instead of hiding what I was going through from the world, we immediately stood in front of it. I miss the hood when I'm traveling. Freeway, whose real name is Leslie Pridgen, received a life-saving kidney transplant in 2019 after spending four years on dialysis. In 2020, when his son Jihad died unexpectedly, the family made the decision to pay it forward. That moment when they came to me in the hospital and asked me and my family, will we let him be an organ donor? It meant everything to me because I know what it felt like. I was on dialysis for four years, so I know what it feels like to wait for a life sustaining kidney. So it was no question. Jihad's donation saved four lives. He and other organ, eye and tissue donors were honored on the One Legacy Donate Life float with a florograph. The experience was breathtaking. While his passion is still music, Freeway says advocacy is now his purpose. Monday, he rode on the float beside his son's image with other transplant recipients, honoring the donor who saved his life and uplifting the memory of his son who saved others. Donya Backus, CBS News. Pasadena, California. That's this week's Eye on Health. I'm Michael George. Thanks for joining us and be well.